If everyone's paying attention, they will see that I am here right now with the whiz bangs. So you guys, uh, you know, obviously being a father-son group or father-sons group, you guys have been playing with one another for quite a while, I would imagine. But in terms of actually making the whiz bangs like an official music group, how long have you guys been working together? I, well, we've been playing together since they were born. Wow, um, okay. <laughs> but but officially, we started the album actually two years ago. Okay. Um, as you might understand, since I'm in Wisconsin, and they're spread around Pennsylvania, and some of their good friends who are also great musicians are in other parts of uh, either Pennsylvania or New York, it, it, it takes a village to get us together. Right, um, right. So it is, but I, I think that the time that it's taken has, has been worthwhile. We've, we've grown as a band, we've grown as musicians, certainly I've grown as, as a musician. Um, and it was kind of like that old commercial, I shall serve no wine before it's time. So I'm... You know, you have to be sorry about that, son. Uh, <laughs> that that's called dating myself. Uh, yeah, yeah. About, yeah. Well, I know it, it's an old. It's not like anyone else will date you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> love him. Love him too. Uh, so, so from my my view, it's it's been two years, and it's been a it's been a great trip, um, and we're now getting ready to kick this thing off and get it on the road. That is so cool that you guys are doing this together. I mean, you don't you don't see a whole lot of that anymore, you know? I mean, you might see things with, like, the siblings and stuff like that, but in terms of, like, the parents and the siblings, I mean, that's almost like a... It's something that occurred many moons ago, you know, in the music scene, but you don't see a lot of that contemporarily, you know? And then I noticed one of the other things that's really cool about, you know, your sound is that it really is kind of old school rock and roll. Is that is that kind of what you fostered in, in within the family and, and, and the kind of style of music that everyone's grown up with? You wanna why don't you guys take a minute? I mean he's specifically asking you about that one, but oh, okay. Well I'm sorry. Well then no. Well I mean whoever <laughs> wants to answer it. Whoever wants to answer it, you know? I mean I just figured you being the patriarch of the family, I mean I'm I'm assuming that you kind of reared your boys up, you know, in in your, you know, musical uh, you know, tastes and whatnot. Um, well, they they certainly heard all the songs of my era and and generation. Uh, but I, I think what's cool about the album without trying to be um, boastful is that it's actually the, the musical genre of taste are actually very widespread. So you right. certainly have a, some songs that are, I'd say 60s and 70s, which is from my generation. And right. then you have hard, hard rock core stuff like okay. Common Enemy, which Charlie wrote. And then you have what I would call some indie stuff. But also there's a few songs that I think are kind of has some jazz infused to them too well. So what I like is kind of the the breadth of the different musical styles that we have on our first album. Okay, yeah. Now, I only heard a couple of the songs. I, di I didn't hear the whole album. So that's that'll be nice for me to go back and actually listen to, so now I'll know what you're talking about. But uh, in the one video, the live video I saw of you guys in the studio, I guess, you know, I saw that the saxophone got broken out there, which was really cool. And, uh, you know, you had some other members, you know, in that group outside of, I'm assuming, your family. These were family friends, I'm guessing. That's YouTube. <laughs> uh, You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what I saw on YouTube, yeah. 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 Um, friends and friends of friends. Okay. Certainly. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah, so, um, you know, primarily for this album, what we did was uh, we reached out to uh, an immediate network of people that Charlie and I have played with. Okay. Uh, specifically up in the Ithaca area. Okay. Um, Samuel Lupowitz of the, the Samuel Lupowitz band, he played bass and, and some keyboards. Uh, Mark Hennessy and I have been playing together for a couple of years now. He played guitar. Right. Um, so when we, we sat down for that video session specifically, we brought in um, a couple sort of, you know, Ithaca sharpshooters to, to round things out for us. Okay. All right. Now, uh, now, now being so that you're... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say what was cool about, again, the whole production is this was 
an extended family. I mean, I've known <coughs> those guys as well because uh, they grew up together and, and uh, have played for a long time. So it was an extended family, which was fun. The other cool part is when we brought in um, Eric Johnson, who's playing sax on the video that you saw. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Doug Robinson, who played bass, is they came in and in 20 minutes, they less than 20 minutes, they knew the song and we were ripping away on it. So that was that was so great. Um, and then we have a great producer too, who herds the cats as we are okay. and, uh, you know, keeps us on song, no pun intended. Yeah. 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 Nice. Nice. So, uh, did you have any particular goals going into this? I mean, was this kind of thought of as just, you know, we're going to have some fun here as father and sons making some music or did you have any bigger goals in mind, you know, in terms of playing to big crowds, cutting multiple albums, you know, record labels. I mean, was any of this, did, did you have any ambitions of kind of maybe making a, a career out of this? It started and it in essence still is me playing with my sons. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's a connection there that not every father gets to experience yeah, right. I mean, a lot of dads are out in the backyard having a catch with their sons, you know, and here you get into, now obviously your boys are growing up, you know, so you're kind of beyond going, hey, dad, let's go have a catch, you know, but uh, the fact that you guys can rock out with one another. That, I, actually. Yeah. yeah we do. We actually I can't think of anything cooler, though. He doesn't. James doesn't. But, <laughs> <we> do. <laughs> but, but quite not, you know, there is, it, it's kind of a, um, uh, a dichotomy on, on the one hand and the most major thing, at least for me, and I'll let the boys explain why they're doing it, yeah. is that I get to play music with my sons. And on the other hand, as we're talking, for example, I, I also want to know how good we can be. Yeah. So I, I don't think this as, as a once and done thing and, you know, why we're working with Gramophone and, and Hyper um, and why we're launching this album is to, to see how far we can go. And I mean, nothing ambitious other than I want to know if other people like our music. Right. Now, that being said, if no one buys the album, I'm still as happy as can be that I, I'm playing music with my sons. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. I, it's kind of the, it's kind of the best of both worlds from my standpoint. Now we that's would very like cool. People to buy the album, though, we really would like that. <laughs> sure, no, of course, of course. Yeah, don't but, get me wrong; it'll yeah. be available for ten dollars shortly. Yeah. yeah, now that's awesome, though. I mean, so, so guys, what's it like for you playing with your old man? It's an experience. I mean, <laughs> it's it's weird to sum up, only because uh, I mean, Charlie and I have been playing music for for years and years now. Um, this is probably what our third or fourth band together, I think. Yeah. Oh wow. And, uh, you know, starting starting fresh, just because you know, Dad hasn't really had that whole experience of, of going into a studio and just working stuff out. Right. Um, how the songwriting process actually moves forward. Um, I think the first session we sat down, we knocked out maybe five tracks, and I think maybe only one of those has actually made it to the final album. Um, one of them has completely changed form and tone in the okay. two years that we've been working on it. Okay. So it's, it's refreshing as a musician, uh, musician having been through this many, many times myself to just see somebody approaching it with a, a really fresh perspective. Okay. Um, and the fact that it's my dad is, you know, an added benefit. Yeah, no, that's so cool. Now, I guess in terms of the music that you guys are actually producing, uh, is it like a collaborative effort from a, from a lyrics perspective, or is there any one of you that kind of takes control of doing the writing? Oh man, um, uh, a lot of it is uh, between my father and myself. Okay, actually, all right. Um, so we kind of do, um, I would say, the heavy lifting of actually writing down the songs, um, if you can call it heavy lifting. Okay. Um, so my dad will come to me with an idea and uh, we'll sit down with it because I have a lot of uh, music composition training, you know, everything that goes with that. Um, and then when we basically throw it out to James um, or one of our other friends, you know, 
kick it around for some arranging ideas. Right. Um, and I mean, even when we went to the studio, we were actually still coming up with stuff on the spot, and it was it was impressive that we could pull it off and that everyone you know had a good time doing it. Okay. It, yeah. What what what's interesting for me is it is a role reversal. Um, is that in the studio? I'm not the dad. Okay. Um, and and so it, nice. what I love about it, you know, I could I could go sing at a local coffee house here by myself, but I I love the collaboration of writing songs with the boys. I love being a part of the band where it's a fuller sound than me just plucking a, a you know one lyric on a guitar in a Starbucks. Right. Uh, so I, so I love the process. Um, it took me a while to get used to not being the dad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. You know, so that that was an evolution, but but it also was a great learning experience, and to have uh, really skilled musicians around me, and the fact that you know two of them are my my, my boys again just made it a, a really rewarding experience. Uh, and what's interesting is I see the evolution in studio, for example. What I didn't know through all these years is what a great ear James has Yeah. Uh, from a standpoint of this is kind of the pro- – Jim James is the producer on stage. And okay. he really has a great ear. Um, you know, the one, the one thing that was interesting for me is um, in a different environment, my sons are, are greatly direct. Um, <laughs> and, and, and it's interesting to, to hear them say, Dad – you know that sucks. Um, <laughs> Do they get that from you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. Let's just add a correction in here. I don't think the phrase "dad that sucks" was ever uttered. <laughs> That's not working. I don't think we were that blunt. Oh, yeah, that's too funny. It that blunt. No, no, Dad, we are not doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was um, That's one, one of the funny. songs that you'll hear, which is uh, I. It's called "I Remember the Time," and it really is uh, two, <laughs> two parts of, of a song. One, it's really about my life with my wife, how we started everything. We'll be married thirty-six years uh, on January first. Wow! Congrats. Uh, but, but I, I also wanted to kind of write a tome to both Brian Wilson and to Phil Spector. Okay. Um, so so you're here, you'll hear a little bit of that in the song, but I was trying to explain the sound as wall of sound, and at one point James finally kind of like stopped and said, if you say wall of sound one more time. <laughs> okay, that actually did happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think he said, you are officially banned from using the term wall yeah. of sound. <laughs> That's too funny. That's too funny. So backtracking a little bit, where do whiz bangs come from? Where'd that name come from? Uh, well, that was I was a uh, I was senior VP for a transportation company for thirty years, so my background's in marketing. Okay, and I I wanted to keep it memorable. I wanted to keep it short. I wanted to make sure it was accessible as a URL and all the other things on social media, and I wanted to make sure that we could trademark it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Really? So there was so, nothing heartfelt about the name of this band at all. You came with this yeah. totally from a marketing perspective. Yeah. It was a it was a marketing perspective, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know what? That's actually pretty genius. But then I don't need to tell you because you've been doing this your whole career, right? <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it genius, but <laughs> hey, it's all about marketing. It's all about marketing. It's all about branding, and I mean. And I'm sure you guys have seen this a lot. I mean, there's a lot of bands out there that have the same name as other bands, and then you run into all kinds of issues with, you know, trademarks and copyrights and all kinds of stuff. And I mean, who needs that, you know? And I mean, when I was actually out there Googling and, you know, Facebooking and all that, there was only one The Whizbangs. And we, I just last month got the notice from the United States Trademark Protection Organization that it's trademark. So that was little little baby steps. I was happy. Nice. This is the nice the nice thing about being in a band with your dad is that he takes care of all of these things for you. Yeah, yeah. see, look at you. Look at what are you you guys are millennials too, aren't you? You know, that's that's why your dad actually did I hear you you're out there in Wisconsin? So you, yeah. that that was the only way to make sure that your boys absolutely couldn't crash in your basement forever. Right? Well it didn't stop. Well, 
that, that being said, is part of the part of the big connection of how this got started. Oh yeah. Um, was Charlie was here, and he? Th- I'm in my basement, and this <laughs> bed is where Charlie stayed. But I'll let him tell the story. <laughs> It's yeah, great. actually, uh, we really started writing music. Um, my girlfriend got sick. Uh, she got Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is oh, wow. a pretty, pretty awful thing where you start losing motor, uh, muscular motor function throughout your entire body. Oh, no. Um, but I couldn't support her and, you know, pay for everything and live at the apartment we were living in. So we oh. actually moved to Wisconsin and stayed with my uh my parents until we got up on our feet okay all right um and then i mean they had a grand piano which i missed very much playing okay um and then you know my dad came to me we had like worked on stuff a little bit here and then uh but he really wanted to uh, sit down and do something so that's when we uh he started bringing me lyrics started bringing me songs and wow. we started working on it okay well that's awesome that's awesome. So I guess uh, this this is your first album, then the the life, love, and other mishaps. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess uh, how long has this been in the making? Obviously, you guys officially formed, you know, together as a group a couple of years ago. But would you say that uh, a lot of the the feelings and emotions and creativity that went into this album is actually something that's you know been brewing for a much longer period of time? Well, from um, Go ahead, Charles. Yeah, yeah, I've been writing songs for um, more than 10 years now. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so, yeah, some of these, I think one or two of the songs are at least eight years old, and they've been kicking around for a while. That's awesome. And you finally um, get to bring them to fruition with your family. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a real uh, positive experience for me, like just actually being allowed the opportunity to bring these things that have been kicking around in my my head and my heart for so long. Yeah, no, Um, that's awesome. Well, everybody, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this interview with the Whizbangs, and make sure you go check out Life, Love, and Other Mishaps, and uh, we'll definitely be providing you with some updates when uh, they get back out here in the Philadelphia region. Guys, Merry Christmas, Happy New Merry Year, Christmas. and uh, have a very happy holidays, and I hope everyone uh, you know, stays cool, stays healthy, keep on rocking, guys. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Scott. Talk Bye. to you later. Bye.